I'm kind of, I'm fine of keeping the intensity on the move so that it doesn't sound too repetitive at any given time. That's the idea. Anyway. So we had to do quite a few uh, tools ourselves, a lot of tools in fact. And this is a, an interesting element where, you know, when, when people talk about music games, a lot of outsourcing happens in terms of composition and production, which is, which is fine, but something like this project just simply couldn't have been done unless it was in-house, because the amount of interaction between the, the audio programmer and the <coughs> composer or uh, audio designer was just almost constant, um, which is, I think, why it's good to have strong in-house audio. I mean, with music, it's becoming rarer and rarer to have music uh, composed and produced in-house. <coughs> for a game like this, it, it worked really well because the um, communication levels with the audio programmer and others can just be uh, constant and there's no delay in waiting around. Um, and obviously, something like this needed a lot of support code side, and we we're very lucky on this game to have a, a program who's very savvy and, and keen to get involved with all things audio. Um, uh, yeah, so we were designing tools right from the word go, and they were being tweaked all the way through the development. Um, there are certain aspects and bugs which have now been fixed that weren't been fixed at the time, and things like that, because it was all pretty much um, you know fresh stuff. It was all brand new. Um, the implementation on the music for this project took a long time. Um, from my own experience, I can tell you it was quite, uh, yeah, quite chopping up all those sort of WAV files and implementing the events and making sure everything played correctly. Once the music was composed, produced, recorded, and mixed, then took a further two weeks on each track just to implement it correctly. So that makes sure that all the things are playing at the right times. The levels are balanced across the, the streamed audio data and the RAM resident data. And obviously the overall mix with regards to dialogue, sound effects, and everything else. <coughs> so um, before we have some questions, um, I'd just like to kind of wrap up by saying, you know, that you know, interactive music, you can use live live elements, real musicians. In fact, it's it's great when you do because it kind of evokes a more of a, a live and happening feel when the music actually playing back. Um, utilize every trick in the book to minimize the pest. This this is important, like. Anything you can do. For example, there may be one track where in the pre-baked stereo, uh, sorry, not stereo version, but in the pre-baked streamed version of the music, there may be, let's say, a guitar solo. And in the studio, there are two guitar solo takes, and I liked both of them. So, you know, what I did on a couple of tracks was to just actually bake in the track back to back. So you're actually hearing the track back twice, but having both solos in. So first time around it's one solo and the second time around it's another solo and the player subconsciously won't really notice that or won't realise what's going on but it avoids the repetitiveness of hearing the same thing twice. So anything you can do to <coughs> minimise repetitiveness is, is definitely a good thing. Um, yeah, this is very important to kind of, when you're working with heavy interactive stuff like this where a lot of tool size support is needed, it's imperative that the uh, audio program is obviously written from the same page. And, um, this is a tough one, as anyone who works you know, in development will know. Code is a very valuable guide, and they always get taken off audio and put into other things, you know, like UIs. And so uh, just keep sort of battling with product management, saying we need this audio, we need, we need a designated, designated sound program. You know, especially with consoles now, you can't just get by with having a, a program who's just going to also double up on the sound. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You, know, you really need a full-time um, sound program. Um, maybe more, more than one. It's more than possible. Um, in terms of tools, I mentioned that all this stuff was developed in-house. When we started the game, there wasn't actually any third-party tools that provided the solution for us to actually do what we were trying to do. That's changed a bit now. There's some good stuff now with Wise, and uh, I know that F um have been doing some great things with their interactive music elements. But um, if you can, you know, go for the in-house approach for something because you can tailor tailor everything to your exact needs. It does mean that you've got a lot of uh, more manpower to, to justify in-house development. But both solutions have got their, um, their, their merits, so it's all a question of what's going to be happening um, on your own project. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. And are there any questions about these? Okay, uh, <coughs> um, now you've come through the other side, it's been a great success. Uh, what would be the in your mind, the biggest challenges you had, and how did you overcome it? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges was 
knowing, kind of having an idea of what I wanted to achieve, but then being a bit scared that it would all fall apart. So 